Uh, we're going to welcome to stage Ian Murphy in a second, so make you feel very welcome on three. One, two, three, go! Let's go on the stage, Ian Murphy! How are we? Thanks very much for that lovely, lovely welcome. Can I caution you all just to lower your expectations? So, uh, whoa, 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 what's going on there? If you're, if you're my mate over there, shut the fuck up, okay? So my name's Ian, it's really lovely to be here. And what do you reckon? I think I've nailed the casual paedophile look, don't you? That wasn't a fucking joke. In my mind, I had a vibe, I had a Jeff Goldblum vibe going on. You know, a bit suave, a bit sophisticated. The reality, however, is creepy uncle, isn't it? It's creepy uncle who bears more than a passing resemblance to Rolf Harris. <laughs> but you probably think to yourself, shave the beard off, dickhead. Shave the beard off, job done. The problem with that is, under this beard lies the face of John Major. <laughs> Can't seem to catch a break. So now the predicament I've got is, do I want people looking at me like this thinking, he's wrong and don't leave him with your kids? Or do I shave the beard off and I want people looking at me thinking, didn't you once fuck Edwina Curry? <laughs> Fucking. Less of two evils, folks. It really is the less of two evils. But it's not the walk in the park dress looking like this that you would think it is, primarily because I'm banned from most parks. <laughs> but I have a superpower. I really do. I have a superpower. I'm like a soothing and calming influence on kids. I'm like a child whisperer. Obviously, that whisper is, shh, can you keep a secret? <laughs> no, no, I am. If a kid's kicking off and they're having a tantrum, if you put me in the room with them, they're fucking, they're like that, they're mesmerised. It's like giving spice to tramps. <laughs> it really is. And I find as well that with that good behaviour, you need to reward them for it. So I always carry around a little reward in my pocket for the kids. Normally, I wear this original, because it is the suite of choice for the paedophile, right? Serves two purposes. It says, hey, I value you for your good behaviour. And it also helps take away the salty aftertaste as well. I got, I got a new. Thank you very much. My work is done here. I got a new. So normally in this part of the set, I'll do something about being a scouser. I'm warning you to keep tight all your valuables. However, I've been looking around and there's fuck all of value, to be quite honest. There really is. But if you listen closely in life, if you listen intently, you'll hear other corners of society give you their own little warnings. I'll give you a few examples. So if you're with your mates and one of them pipes up with, yeah, 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 I've been vegan for a couple of weeks now, I feel absolutely amazing. They're warning you that the next 10 or 15 minutes of your life are gonna be the most worthy and boring conversation you've ever experienced. Yeah. Or, or if you're with this one, you're having the perennial debate of cats versus dogs, and somebody says to you, yeah, yeah, I'm more of a cat person, actually. They're warning you, and they know, they, they know in like years to come, they're going to be dying alone, stinking of piss. <laughs> or my absolute favourite, if you're in the presence of this one, yeah, 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 yeah. I voted Brexit, and I also voted Conservative in the last election as well. They're warning you that they're quite a special category of cunt. Now, I told that in Taunton, and if you don't know where Taunton is, it's about 1984. But, but if you've never been there, it's Brexit and Tory Central, right? So the crowd went a little bit iffy on me, so I'll get them back on side. I'll say something nice. I said to them, look, I know not all Conservatives are bad. I know there's good Conservatives. The cemeteries are fucking full of them. <laughs> Didn't work. Didn't work. But now I've got a new one for them. I've got a new one because life's all about balance, right? Life is all about balance. So I'm going to say something nice about the Conservative government. Strap yourselves in. I'm not going to fucking repeat it. Say what you will about this government. Say what you will. But they're going to prove the impossible possible. They're going to astound the world of science by finally proving once and for all that time travel is a possibility. Because round about Christmas, we're all going to be back in the 19 fucking 70s. If you weren't there the first time, oh, you're going to love it. You're going to love it. Questionable social attitudes, but you can smack kids. 
swings and roundabouts. Didn't even have to be your own kids. <laughs> Parents at the back there. Oh, dear me. So, oh, do you know what? I knew I was going to lose my place in the set at some point, right? I didn't realize it was here. Let me, um, let me tell you a few things about me, right? Uh, as you know, I'm a scouser. But let me give you uh, a claim to fame I've got. I've got a claim to fame um, that uh, most people don't know about. My friends know about because I trot out with regular monotony. I've got a claim to fame. I played at Wembley, right? <laughs> See? Anyway, just shoe on it in. I said that to somebody once. I said that to somebody once. I got the best response ever. They looked back at me and they went, all right, what instrument did you play? What fucking instrument? They've obviously looked me up and down. They've looked me up and down and gone, yeah, never a fucking athlete. Never a fucking athlete. And they admitted to myself, they admitted to me afterwards that actually they thought I was part of the brass band at half time. It must be my rusty trombone ellipse, right? But, so I've been slightly disingenuous. Just one second. I've been slightly disingenuous with you people about my Scouse nature, right? I'm what's known as an ex-Scouser. Now, I was born here, grew up here, lived in Walton, went to Allsop. But for over half my life, I've lived away. And I know I'm an ex-Scouser. I know I'm an ex-Scouser because every time I come home, my friends and family remind me of the fact. Whenever I walk into a room, I get this same response. Here he is, the posh Tory nonce. They're laughing because they say it, right? <laughs> and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are you calling a Tory? <laughs> Mum? <laughs> it's not my fault kids find this look attractive now, is it? <laughs> so I find it useful to retain the Scouse accent. I haven't tried to get rid of it, but I find it useful. And I found it useful the other week. I was in a comedy club and there was somebody just hailing abuse from the back. Just pure insults, just nothing of value, wasn't even heckling. So I had to turn around and go, listen, dickhead, if you keep that up, I'm going to come over there and kick fuck out of you. And the crowd went up, it was brilliant. And I was hoping upon hope that he didn't storm the stage. <laughs> because if he'd have stormed the stage, He'd have found out, I can't fight fucking sleep. <laughs> Never mind me being six foot four and having an aggressive Scouse accent. If he'd have stormed that stage, I'd have hit the deck so fast that I think Garrett Southgate would have been on the phone to see if I could understudy for Harry Kane. <laughs> he's a diving cunt, isn't he? Eh? Isn't he? I mean, he's a wonderful footballer, but he's a diving... And I know why he gets the penalties. I know why the likes of Harry Kane gets the penalties and the likes of Mo Salah doesn't, right? I understand it. Spot the bitter blue noses. Right? But I know why. There's an elephant in the room and people don't want to say it. I don't mind saying it. It's quite simply because Harry Kane is special needs. No, he is. He is. Honestly, he is. Have you heard him in an interview? It's like fucking Rocky Balboa's had a stroke. <laughs> no, he is. But I turned 50. I turned 50 in lockdown. I decided to give stand-up a go, right? I decided to give a go. Now, don't worry. This isn't some kind of Make-A-Wish Foundation thing. <laughs> right? There'll be no collections. I have no desire to go to Disneyland. <laughs> so that's a very good shout Mr Fay uh, listen let's all give a round of applause to Joey Fay because that was quite good right but when people find out what I do now I get two general reactions the first reaction people get really intrigued by my bollocks they'll say something on the lines of oh you must have some balls on you mate or oh you must have balls of steel and I'm going to be quite honest with you, ladies and gentlemen, slightly underwhelming. I'm six foot four. This naked is definitely not in proportion. It takes quite a lot of fluffing. 
But it got me thinking, if he's saying that to me, what are you saying to female comedians? I hope you're not going up to a female comedian saying, oh, you must have some clit on you, love. <laughs> or even worse, oh, you must have a funny like the Grand Canyon. <laughs> Canyon. Canyon. You'd probably end up with a slap in the face. And rightly so. If you didn't get the Grand Canyon gag, it's probably because you're just a little bit shallow. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've already taken up too much of your time. I just want to say a big thank you, right? This is my 14th gig, and you've made a very, a very middle-aged, grumpy man really happy this evening. It's been a dream of mine, so thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, ladies and gentlemen.